Hey guys, sitting in the Bronco, uh, put in a few hours of work on it today and thought I'd just kind of give you a heads up um, on what transpired today for those that are interested. Um, so kind of cleaned all the trash out of it to start and then started taking um, dismantling a few things here and there. The very first thing that I did was take the antenna off of the windshield. And the very first screw that I got to was was stripped, and it, it took me like six or seven minutes just to get that stupid antenna off off the windshield. But I got it out, and it's fine. So that was that was good. Started with the passenger side door inserts. That uh, came out pretty easily. Um, not much to it. Uh, the all of the screws, I started by I started to back them out by hand. Uh, once I knew that they were free and not seized, I, I used a drill to uh, back them all all the way out just to speed things up. I just didn't want to use the drill. I was too worried that uh, I didn't want to use the drill to start them out because I didn't want to break anything off. Um, so. That came out easy. The door inserts are basically made up of three parts. You've got the fiberglass door insert, then you've got kind of a rear um, uh, sheet metal piece that encloses the back side of the, the door insert, and then there's a front sheet metal piece that uh, encloses the cab side of the front. Um, the front sheet metal pieces I've left in for now. I'll take them out once I get the dash out, but I did not do the dash today. Uh, so after the door insert was done, then I started on uh, the passenger side seat. The first bolt that I took out uh, snapped off. So I'll have to, uh, I'll have to fix that. Um, all of the rest of the bolts came out fine. On my particular Bronco, the passenger side seat doesn't have that many bolts in it because uh, it's, it's a folding seat uh, to get access to the back. So there was only, I think there was only three holding it on. Um, so passenger side seat came out. After the passenger side seat was out, then I proceeded to pull up some carpet. Wanted to see what the condition of things was underneath the carpet. I got, got a lot of that pulled out and out of the way. And then I moved over to the driver's side and pulled the driver's side insert out. Uh, same method as the passenger side. Uh, no hiccups there. Uh, then I started on the driver's side seat, which the driver's side seat came out without any issues. It had four bolts, I think, total. Um, those all were fine, didn't have any issues. So after the driver's seats were out, uh, I finished pulling up all of the carpet in the, in the cab. Uh, had a little bit of an issue with the ring that goes around the, um, the four-wheel drive shifter. It, is, it was just completely gone. And I still have some studs I still have some remnant of the studs that held it on and uh, I'll have to grind those off when I get to that point. After that was all done, I cleaned up, vacuumed out all of the debris and stuff that was on the floorboards and in the bed. Um, just a quick shot back, nothing special. And then I turned my attention to the lights. So I took the, uh, both the lenses and the housings out for the taillights. Uh, there's some aftermarket blinkers that were on the back that um, actually, I don't know if you can see it, but there's two switches down here that operated those. Just don't want to forget to turn them off. Uh, we're going to do away with all of that, so that's not necessary anymore. But anyways, there was blinkers on there. Uh, that were separate from the rest of the housing for the brake light, tail light assembly. Uh, so we got the brake lights out, the tail lights out, and then, and then tried to get those blinkers off, which proved to be way more of a problem than I thought it was going to be. They, the, the nut that was retaining them, it, it was just impossible to get to. 
Uh, I finally I finally got a deep enough socket that I could get to it and get my hands in there and, and uh, they came out eventually. So taillights were out. Uh, after that was done, I moved to the bumpers. I uh, got the rear bumper off and the front bumper off. Both of the rear and the front were only held on by uh, the top bolts. So they came out pretty easy, although the right front bolt, I don't know if the bolt was bent or what, but it fought me to the very last thread to get that out and just about wore me out, um, which just isn't a good sign for this early on in a project for these simple tasks, but it was not any fun. So the next thing that I tackled in was the roll bar. Um, it was basically lag screwed into the um, into the body, uh, the the bed and the wheel wells. Um, it was pretty simple. There was no backing plate or anything on it, so um, it came out without an issue. I'm trying to just finagle it out of the bed without scratching stuff up. Although I don't know why I'm worried about that, um, but. That was the trickiest part, was just getting it out of the bed. Um, after that, I moved to the, to the front and uh, took out the, the headlights, disconnected them, set them aside. Uh, and actually, for these headlights, it's kind of funny because um, they both had these, both, both right, uh, drivers and passenger side had these little clips on there. Uh, and uh, it's supposed to be, well, the other clips are, are in the Bronco still. This is an aftermarket uh, modification. Um, it's a retainer clip for a kitchen sink. So that's, that was interesting. Um, I'm gonna keep it because it works. And I don't know, you know, if, if there's an uh, alternate solution um, to kind of, attaching these uh, so I'm gonna hang on to it but I thought it was funny both sides had a kitchen sink uh, retainer clip used to hold the top portion of the headlight in so that was that was interesting um, after the headlights were out I moved to the uh, I guess the turn signals uh, one of the turn signals was was damaged already and it it fell apart but uh, I pulled both of them out and they're just held on with uh, two kind of, I don't know what you call them, but like uh, sheet metal nuts. Um, and uh, they, they just pop right out. So I then uh, removed the driver's side mirror, which came out without an issue, although the bracket here is still attached. These four screws are um, permanently embedded. Uh, uh, I'll work on those again, but they don't want to come out. They are in there. I tell you, it's the most stout mirror mount ever. So hopefully I can get those out without tearing anything up, but we'll see. You know, overall, I'm pretty pleased with the condition of things. Uh, I didn't know exactly what I was going to, you know, what I was going to find in here. And overall, you know, m m screws and, and bolts and nuts all came apart pretty, pretty easily. And uh, I'm pretty pleased with regards to how that all came about. Um, I think the next step is probably going to be uh, maybe the dash removal. Um, I'm gonna have to noodle on that a little bit tonight. We'll see um, what I want to do next, but I think it's gonna be the dash removal and then the grill, the, the front end. Um, so those are gonna be, those are gonna take some time. Because the dash, um, there's just a lot of stuff in the dash that has to come apart to get that out including the steering column, not the least of which is the steering column. Um, so, but it's pretty straightforward and hopefully if all the fasteners cooperate the way that they have so far, um, it should be pretty easy. So, 
That and then, and then the front clip, the, the front grill. I don't anticipate having too much of an issue with the front grill, but you never know. Um, but you know, overall, everything is everything's in good shape. I think it's going to clean up real, real nice. Uh, so here's my plans um, moving forward, and they're really fluid. So as I uncover things, you know, we're, we may have to reevaluate what what we're going to do, but. Um, I think my intention right now is to get the body stripped down um, so you know I, to the level that I'm going to strip it down though I'm not sure because uh, you know, part of me had thought that I was going to take just take everything off um, and and get it down to kind of the, the subframe to the inner fenders and whatnot but and the, the more I look at stuff the more I'm not sure that I really want to do that. I don't know what the benefit is. I, I, I think that everything's in good shape and um, I'm going to take this thing to be to be sandblasted and I don't really want to take a bunch of parts and pieces and then have to put those back together. Um, so I'm I'm leaning right now towards leaving the fenders on um, and taking the hood off Taking the grill off. The grill's got a dent in it, so I gotta repair that. And um, I think it's just easier to have the grill off to do that. So grill, hood. I'll take the tailgate off and separate the body from the frame. Uh, so at some point, we'll lift the body off of the frame, and then we'll take the body to get sandblasted <clears throat> and. Eventually, again, I don't know exactly how the timing's going to work out, but um, we'll sandblast the frame, and I have a whole bunch of questions in my mind about how all that's going to work. Uh, I don't have a rotisserie. I've talked to a couple sandblasters, and, and one of them said that if I delivered the body to them, that they could they could handle it. Um, so, you know, that's that's good news because I do want the underneath side of it blasted as well. And all of, the, all of the wheel wells and everything uh, blasted. So uh, blast that immediately after that, get it into primer, and then the clock can slow down a little bit. Uh, and then likewise with the frame, once the body's off the frame, strip the frame down. I'm going to replace <coughs> the fuel lines. I'm going to replace the brake lines. Uh, I'm going to replace all of the wiring in the Bronco. Um, so I'm going to strip the frame down uh, pretty far, uh, but I'm, I'm undecided as to whether or not I should take the frame as a rolling chassis to the sandblaster because I'm not sure that I want to take the axles and everything off. Uh, it becomes difficult for me to move around. Um, so I don't know. I haven't decided how that's going to work out yet. But most of the components in the in the in the front end and the rear end, the suspension components, they're all going to be replaced. So, yeah, I, I just don't know. I mean, really, I just need the frame sandblasted. I want the, I don't know, I guess I, I want the shock towers and whatever, the spring towers or whatever they're called. Um, I want that all hit so that when I do put a new component in, I don't have a rusty spot. But I don't know, I'm new to this, I don't really know. Never had anything. Never had an automobile sandblast. I've never done anything like this. So, which leads me to guess. Uh, my final thought is, uh, as you're watching this, you're going to see things that are that are odd, um, both from the standpoint of the Bronco. But I'm sure I'm going to do something that you guys are going to question and, and maybe legitimately so have concerns. But you know, I'm just I'm doing what I either think is best or uh, what I want to do. Uh, even if I know it may not be best. Um, I don't need to justify that to anybody. Everybody has to determine what their priorities are, but uh, you know, I'm sitting here in, in my garage. I don't have a workshop. I don't have a lift. Um, you know, I've mentioned some of the stuff that I don't have. I've got a welder sitting over there and you know, I've got hand tools for the most part. And so you know, this whole thing is going to be done with what, pretty much what I've got. I, I'm not going to go buy 
you know, I've got a small air compressor, not enough to run, you know, any significant um, pneumatic tools. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not going to buy a new air compressor. I'm not going to buy, um, yeah, one thing I may buy is an engine hoist. I don't have one. Um, and frankly, I could use that for a lot of different things. So I may end up buying one of those, but beyond that, I can't think of anything that I'm really going to need to pick up or that I'm going to pick up, whether I need it or not. Um, maybe some specialty tools for, I don't know, ball joints or something like that, setting seals. But, you know, some, some hand tools that are useful and um, that are small, but, you know, nothing, nothing major. So, you know, we're going to see how this goes. Hopefully it works out and you can see what I was able to do um, given the starting point that I had and, um, uh, you know, what my kind of end goal is. Uh, but, you know, this is not, this, this not going to be... A, a restoration of sorts. It's just more of a, um, we'll call it a facelift for the old, the old 66. And I think that it will be actually more than I need to enjoy it. Um, but I think it'll make, I think it'll make the wife happy and, um, I think it'll bring us a, a lot of years of enjoyment. So, so that's, uh, day one. Uh, we are in it's the, just the beginning of the start of the third week of January, and so you know I'm, I'm going to do this as quick as I can. Um, I have to rely on some outside help, so I'm going to be subject to their schedules. But uh, we're just going to keep keep banging away at this thing and, and see what happens. So, but overall, she's in good shape, and um, we made some progress today. So. Yeah, stay tuned for, uh, I guess, the dash removal and uh, the, the, the grill and maybe whatever else I can tack on today. I guess we'll call it day three at that point. So thanks for watching and uh, yeah, stay tuned.